What the heck is going on everybody? Let's get excited to code the client side of the chat application. Navigate to mainactivity.java file and let's have a reference to all the views, view items that are present in the main layout. We have a message list and a message box. and a text view. Now let's build a WebSocket connection to the server. We will do the same in instantiate WebSocket method. Press Alt Enter to create this method. Okay, so the first thing you will need to do is create an OK HTTP client object. After that, build the OK HTTP request. We will pass the required URL when we are done with everything. We can now create the WebSocket object. Pass the request as a first parameter. Okay, so the second parameter that goes is a WebSocket listener. Why so? Well, whenever any events take place in the WebSocket connection, then different methods of the listener class are called to inform about the event. For example, there are methods that fire up whenever there is a new message sent by the server to the client. Enough of the theory, let's create the actual listener. Create a class socket listener. This class will extend WebSocket listener. Press Ctrl O to override the required methods. Also, we will have a constructor. This construction constructor will take a reference to the main activity class. Why? I will tell you later. Now let's see when are these methods called. OnOpen is called when the connection establishes with the server. OnMessage is called when there is a new message. So messages can be sent or received either in bytes or in strings. We have two different methods for both the functions. OnClosing is called just before the connection is closed. And OnCloseD is called, you guessed it, when the connection closes. On failure is called when some error occurs. Now all these functions are called from a background thread and thus we cannot directly touch the Android views. So what to do now? Well it can be done through the run on UI thread method of the activity. So when the connection establishes we will show a toast message showing the text connection established. We will do that in the UI thread of the main activity class. Toast.make text connection established. Now for this application, we will only deal with string messages. So 
we don't need this function Here also we will do all the work in the UI thread of the main activity class. Create a JSON object. This object will hold a string. Representing the message. Press Alt Enter to surround it with try catch as it throws JSON exception. Now the object will also contain a store a boolean which will tell if the message was sent by the server or not. So here yes the message is being sent by the server. Okay, so let's have the adapter for our message list. Create class message adapter. This will extend base adapter. Press Alt Enter to implement the required methods of this base adapter class. Our data is in the form of JSON object. So let's create a list of JSON object. And now create a method and call this method add item. This will take JSON object as a parameter. add this object to the message list that we have and then call notify data set changed to update the message list we have the messages now we can show them it in the list but before we do that let's implement these methods of the base adapter class get count will return the number of items in the list get item will return the item at the index i get item id will just return the position of the item and get view will return the view okay so if the view is null then only we will inflate it Otherwise, it will result in unpleasant scrolling of the message list or the list view. Attached to root false. Now we have two text views in the message item first is sent message and the second is received message let's obtain the message that we have in the list for this particular view item if the message is sent by the server then we will display it in the received message text view
and we will set the visibility of the sent message text to invisible otherwise we will display the message in the sent message text view and we will set the visibility of received message text view to invisible and also if the message is sent by the server when the, then we will set the the visibility of received message text view to visible and if not then we will set the visibility of sent message text view to visible now we can create an object of this socket listener and we will pass main activity as its parameter and then we can pass this socket listener as the second parameter for our web socket object and also declare this web socket object global now create an object of the message adapter and set the adapter of the message list to the adapter that we created now whenever send is clicked we will send the message to the server and what message are we sending the message that is there in the message box so let's retrieve the message if the message is not empty then we will send it to the server and we will create a json object this will also hold two values first will be the message that is sent and press alt enter to surround it with try catch and the second value will be a boolean which will tell if the message is sent by the server in this case it's not and we can add this data to our message list by calling adapter dot add item json object and also after sending the message we will remove the text from the message box by calling message box dot set text and pass an empty text and uh, we will make this message adapter global because we will be using this outside of this function private message adapter adapter we will be using this adapter in the on message function so when we created the json object after that we got to add that json object to the adapter by calling adapter add item pass json object now go to the manifest file and add permission internet and inside the application tag add uses clear text traffic to true so from android 9 clear text support is disabled so we got to enable that if we want to send human readable data over the http protocol now go to activity main.xml file we will do some changes to the list view to make it look better we will set divider height to 0 db and we will set divider to null 
Now this will remove the divider that you see in the list view. Okay, so that's it. In the next video, we will finish this project. And if you like this video, then give this a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, then do it.